Um, my name is Kenul. I come from Azerbaijan, and I'm a house resident here. Um, I'm going to tell you a small story um, that happened to me in Turkey this summer. We were in summer school um, with international students, but most of the students came from Arabic world. And in general, like during all my career and during my stud study years, I used to interpret and translate a lot. Because I know Russian, I know Turkish, because Azerbaijan is very close to Turkish, and I used to interpret, my, my major is English, so I used to interpret a lot from English, Azerbaijani, and so on. And um, one day we decided to, uh, it was Ramadan, it was in July, and it was evening time, so we had to open our, I don't fast, but they had to open their fast. So Ramadan is the Muslim month of yeah. fasting. Yeah. yeah. And um, we, we decided to go to a restaurant to open our fast. We got on the bus, and it was only me, I think, the international student, student among them, so all of them were Arabs. And um, they, they started to talk. They, we are in the bus, so imagine the situation, we are in the bus, and we are talking to each other, they are talking to each other, and some people are grouped there, like we were eight or nine people in total, and they were talking in Arabic, you know, like discussing the summer school and the dilemma that we are, that they were deadlines and so on, all this stuff. And there was a Turkish woman who was reading a book in the bus. And um, after a while, she turned her back to us and she made a face uh, that we should be silent. And they saw it, so I didn't need to interpret it. And, uh, and then was like, shh, like, you know, a little bit silent. And I was, okay, like, we are too loud. And then we got off the bus, we went to taxi. And uh, we went to the restaurant. Um, it was the, we, we went to the second floor of the restaurant. It was top roof. And when we went there, there was only one woman who was having dinner. So the rest of us, it was only us. And they were there all day having dinner, but I did some shopping. So I, I came a little bit later. And when I came, I also took my food. They, they took their food. And we were like, again, talking, 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 talking. And I, I was actually sitting alone. But then one girl came up to me, Manar, and we, were, we started talking. And shortly after we arrived, uh, that Turkish woman, um, she suddenly stood up from her table, and she, she finished her dinner. It was visible. But, um, and she, she was leaving the restaurant, talking in Turkish, how these people speaking loudly, and making these faces and being angry. And then they asked me, Könül, what this woman is talking about? Because they themselves don't speak Turkish, right? The group exactly. that you were with. Exactly. Yes. So they wanted me to interpret what, how this woman was reacting and what she was telling. And of course, they guessed that it was about them because there was nobody in, there, in, in, that, in that part of the restaurant. And, and that, I said that, you know, like, she feels unpleasant because, like, she feels unpleasant because, like, you're talking loudly, so that's why I, I guess that she's, she's leaving. And then the waiter came. She started to complain to him. And then he somehow smiled, like, you know, like, understanding, like, oh, I feel the same with you, Leah, that these people are talking loudly. And they left the restaurant together. And uh, guys asked me what it was about. I, I told them that it was, you know, like, that you're talking loudly. And then, Manar, oh my God, Manar, she asked me personal questions. Question, Kanul, what do you think about it? Do you think we're talking loudly? And I, I have like two dilemmas in this situation. First, that I honestly thought that they were talking loudly because it was loud for me as well. Even though we have the influence from Arabic culture, like there are many Arabic origin, originated words in Azerbaijan and so on. We were invaded by Arabs and so on back in the history. But the cultures are different. And I told her, because the thing is that, I, I told her the truth that, you know, yes, I think that you're talking loudly. And she didn't tell me anything. I hope that she understood me. Um, for me, two dilemmas. First, about the interpretation. When you're interpreting something, it can be so much sensitive that you don't realize at that time when you're interpreting it because you are so much focused on the literary translation that how you are going to pass this message to the people. So at that time, 
I didn't think about how I am going to pass this measure that it, could, it couldn't be so much sensitive and offensive towards them. So I, do, I didn't think about it at that time because it was just up, ah, they're talking loudly, you know, she said that you are talking loudly. So it's like how to make it that you somehow communicate diplomatically in, the, in that case, using somehow the communication skills that you have that to pass the message, not directly, but somehow like a little bit softer. The second thing is that <laughs> I personally thought that they, they were talking loudly. So how to react in that situation that you are, talk, you are thinking that they are talking loudly, but you don't want to offend them. And when she asked me the personal question, that was just uh, the biggest challenge that I faced. And it's like, all, it's about all the interpretation, it's about all the communication skills between the cultures that I've been facing all my life because I met many international students, I've been many international workshops. And during this intercultural communication, this plays a great role. The interpretation, the interpretation skills, and the communication skills, and the things that you realize or you become aware how the cultures are different, how the, how the people differ from one another. And when you interpret it, you just don't pay attention to that thing. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I didn't pay attention to that thing. And when I recalled my memories, because I, I forgot about it. it, it just happened in July. And when, when I was talking about me about this workshop, I recalled my memories. And the, again, I felt like, oh my God. <sighs> like I felt that, like, oh. Yeah. Like that something was, I mean, they understood that it's, Maybe, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really difficult. It's just, as I told you, like you cannot somehow change the people or you cannot affect the people who, like, who has this culture in their genes. Mm -hmm. And even, like, even after they become immigrants, even they migrate to certain countries, and, but the culture lives with you and they try to preserve this culture. And how to cope with that, that when you are in this intercultural, in this intercultural environment, to sound or to seem that certain things don't seem sensitive or offensive to you or to, towards others. Mm -hmm. And I'm really like, I love this stuff. Yes. <laughs> but it's, it's very, very sensitive and I'm, I am very sensitive about it. So yeah, so that's, that's my story. Now, what I find interesting uh, here uh, is that your dilemma, though it's very different in many ways from, from Yoni's, is also related, it's similar, in that uh, you are needing to express something honest in a way that they can hear so that their emotional defenses don't go up right away and they shut you out and now you know, you're, you've become part of the problem for them, right? Like here's this lady making this face now, now you even are telling us that we're too loud. You know, thanks a lot, right? So the question, once again, is, you know, how do I be honest on the one hand and uh, decent? Notice I didn't say uh, um, non-offensive uh, or, or, you know, play it safe. No, how do I be honest on the one hand and decent on the other. 